From crisis to creation, disruptors as the architects of the new golden horizons. A lot of times when I walk into a crisis situation, people refer to it as a house on fire. The building's on fire, the regular methods of putting it out, the fire extinguisher, the blanket, don't work anymore, otherwise they wouldn't call me. I walked into a location one time and two people were talking to each other. Who is this weird, bald guy walking into our location? What is he doing here? And the other guy said, he's the guy that puts out the dumpster fire. Now in this analogy of the fire, I like to use a bit of a biomimicry example as well. Now biomimicry is the art of taking learnings from nature and applying them to design and business. One of my favorite examples is a bullet train in Japan that used to make such a big bang going into a tunnel and breaking the sound barrier that it was basically unusable. And they looked at a tiny little bird, the kingfisher, that was able to dive into a pond without barely making a splash. Taking that design transformed the nose of the train to mimic the beak and the nose of that bird and reduce the impact a lot more. So when I'm looking at a house on fire, or a building on fire, a department, I like to imagine a rainforest overgrown, full of dead wood, and that's the status quo. And the fire actually can clear away a lot of the excess processes, excess red tape, and create fertile soil for the remaining life to thrive. To give you an example, one which you're probably all very familiar with, Apple. Founded by Steve Jobs, ousted from his own company, and on the brink of collapse, when he came back, that's the moment he turned it into the company we all know today. If they were not at the point of failure, would Steve Jobs have had the same opportunity to turn it around the way he did? Would you have an iPhone in your pocket right now if it wasn't for Apple almost not existing anymore? In that move, he also saw, of course, the piracy that was going on for music and media, bringing forth iTunes, changing the business model. Other companies that built on that were, for instance, Spotify and Netflix, also anticipating on that crisis where the entire music and movie industry were on their butts because everybody was just downloading. I don't know how many of you are still downloading music or videos, but I think very few. One of my more personal favorite examples, however, is Billy Bean at the Oakland Athletics. And most of my friends and my fiance will be laughing their butts off right now because I bring it up so much in the concept of Moneyball. At some point in time, as the general manager of that baseball club in Oakland, California. He lost all of his star players. He had one of the smallest budgets in the entire league, and he had the task to rebuild a team that could potentially win it all. No people, no money. What did he do? He zoomed out. What do I need to do to win a championship. I need to win the last game of the season. What do I need to get to the playoffs to win that last game of the season? I need to win regular season games. Baseball is a game of runs, points or runs. You need to get runs on the board to win games. To get runs on the board, you need to get people on base. Working down and back from that dot he put on the horizon, okay, I want to win a championship, and what do I need, and working your way back through each step and understanding each step, and then coming up with a way to get there, he did not invent the way himself. There were a lot of smart people that already thought of ways of doing it, but they never had the opportunity to actually put it to practice. He had the momentum, he had the moment, and basically if he didn't do anything, they wouldn't win anything. So what did he have to lose? Steve Jobs looked at it the same way when he first founded Apple. If you fail as a computer company at that point in time, people will just see it as a learning and build on it. Now the same methodology of 
coming into a crisis situation, where usually the immediate response is first trying to restore the status quo, do things as we've always done it, even though those were the things that got you where you are. So how will they work? Building on that, saying, okay, where are we actually trying to get to? What is that dot on the horizon that we're trying to work to? Forget about the house that's on fire for a second. What are we trying to solve for? I go into a mode there when I walk into a department or I walk into a company or I walk into a location that I like to refer to as Buddha at the end of the table. I look, listen, and observe and take it all in and see where everybody's head is at because usually it's panic. And the first response everybody has is more money, more people, and those are usually the things that are not available in a crisis. Then, most people will ask, how can I solve your problems? Where, again, you usually get the response to, hey, we always worked this way. How, what, how can we get back to that? So what I usually do is not ask, how can I solve your problems? I'm asking, how can I make it worse? What is a can of gasoline that's standing in the corner that if I open it, will make it worse. What does that give me? It gives me everybody's greatest fear. But it also gives me the opportunity to understand where they think the biggest problems lie and to turn them around in silver linings. So putting that dot on the horizon, understanding all these steps in between that they think are the biggest problems and solving them along the way, being very open and very transparent, never denying that there's a problem, but focusing on getting to that point, that goal and horizon, building up on these silver linings, being more straightforward than Moses in asking all these questions, helps me understand where the true opportunities lie and how to truly make a lasting change and not just apply a quick fix, a fire extinguisher or a blanket but use that fertile soil, because even in the old methods and the way we've always done, there might be good things that we can build on, but they weren't able to flourish. So letting the house burn for a little bit is not my biggest concern. Making use of all of the valuable components that are in that building, the people, the knowledge, the resources, and actually helping them thrive and bring forth the ideas they were unable to voice because of the way we've always done it, is where I think the biggest strength lies in turning those silver linings into a new golden horizon. And that's how you effectively and long-term disrupt a location, a department, or a company to change for the better. Thank you. <laughs>